Hello everyone and welcome to another Division 2 video. My name is Renier Triple Eight and today's video and build it's all about dodge. If you enjoy applying status effects to your enemies and watch them die slowly, this is definitely a build for you and it works excellent having all directives because potentially you have unlimited ammo thanks to the ongoing directive set we will be using and we will generate hollow point ammo every time we kill an enemy with a status effect. The build can be improved in case you do not run the scavenge skill directive as you will gain access to many skills that apply status effects and thus more damage over time effects helping you take down enemies even faster and more effectively. Let's have a closer look at our build for red attributes, one blue and one yellow although we don't need any blue attribute I'd prefer to have something else I will explain that later as we see the build 6 secondary yellow, 1 blue and 1 red 4 pieces of ongoing directive to have that status effect the damage over time this is, will be our main source to apply the damage over time effect it gives us increased status effect, reload speed and every time we kill an enemy that has a status effect our active weapon we gain hollow point ammo that applies bleed and deals increased damage. All the pieces we're using, the holster, the knee pads, the gloves and the backpack must have secondary attributes of status effect and the core attribute can remain the same which is weapon damage. The backpack has a very nice talent for the damage over time playstyle we're using. The trauma specialist increases the duration of the damage of all the bleeds we're doing, not only from the hollow point ammo and probably one of the best backpacks we can use. Moving on, we're using the Vile, the exotic mask, to apply a secondary damage over time. Specifically, it's a debuff that every time we apply status effect to an enemy, we apply the debuff that the damage is increased by our status effect attributes. That's why we stack so much status effect to have uh, two damage over time effects that deal maximum amount of possible damage. For the chest piece, we're using a Golan gear to have an increase 10% uh, status effects. The secondary attribute must be one of them at least status effect, and the talent that uh, only the only one that increases the damage over time effect is the glass cannon that amplifies everything by 25%. But we also take 15% increased damage. It can be quite risky. We don't have so much armor. We can die easily. But honestly, I didn't have any problem. I usually just poke the enemies, apply the damage over time, then hide and wait for them to die out. That's why this is probably one of the best glass cannon builds. Although if you have problem and you don't like using glass cannon, you can use something that fits your preference or your playstyle. You can either something like a breakable to get your armor back in case it breaks from the enemies or something like braced which gives you 45% increased handling since you will be using LMGs, it's perfect or anything else that fits your playstyle as I told you either survivability or damage for weapon damage or skill damage depending on the time of build you have made for yourself for me specifically I can either use glass cannon or braced moving on to the weapons we're using the exotic LMG pestilence that has a unique talent that applies a debuff not a status effect meaning that if you kill the enemy with only this debuff you will not gain hollow point ammo its damage depends of the, of the weapon damage you're doing and since we're not doing so much weapon damage compared to different builds, this is not a Pestilence build, it's a damage over time build that happens to have the Pestilence. I do like it because it's a, honestly it's a third damage over time effect that also spreads uh, on death from its enemy to other enemies, to other nearby enemies. And the Pestilence has a very high ammo count as all LMGs, that's why I prefer to use that. The unique talent also helps us to deal with tanks, uh, drones, and other things that are immune to bleed effects because the, the debuff it's not a bleed effect not a status effect and it can be applied to those and you can just apply the debuff to other enemies let it jump to the to the tanks to the mechanical dogs whatever and they will just keep dying by taking the damage over time our secondary weapon of choice personally i like an m60 that has a very high ammo count very decent damage and helps the damage over time tick a lot and for the talent you can either use the sadist that deals a flat 20 percent weapon damage on bleeding enemies or something that fits a little bit your playstyle preservation for example if you want to, to have some more survivability to get some ammo repair or something um, or something like perpetuation that I have tried, I didn't like it so much honestly 
uh, every headshot you gain 50% status effect damage and duration and that meant I had to switch to my secondary weapon and my primary weapon of TPS is the Pestilence that's why I don't prefer to use that and I just stick with uh, Sadist if you don't like uh, the M60 a very good alternative is a Stone LLMG that has even higher ammo count 235 which is quite uh, decent and although it lacks a little bit of the DPS and the damage over time is a little uh, lower it's excellent if you want to just have a ridiculous amount of ammo account. All the mods are prioritized for stability and accuracy. Personally, I use uh, for uh, stability, accuracy, uh, stability two times and accuracy. In order to have the maximum amount of stability and accuracy, to be able to hit the enemies, we don't gain so much benefit from the critical hits or critical hit chance or critical hit damage. That's why we prioritize these attributes. For the sidearm, you can use something that has a high ammo count, either a TDI, M19, I personally like the TDI custom that I was uh, having preservation uh, initially for my talent but I switched to finisher which is a very fun talent for me to use. After you deal the killing blow with the sidearm you, and you switch to your primary weapon you gain an increase of critical hit chance and critical hit damage although as I told you we don't gain so much benefit 30% it's a ridiculous amount and you can get more benefit with the Pestilence uh, Plague of the Outcast to deal more damage and usually the combination is to kill a red enemy and then switch to a heavy with your Pestilence to deal the maximum amount of damage from Plague of the Outcast but it depends on your playstyle and how you want to approach things for our skills because we will take in a lot of damage thanks to the class cannon I do like to have the Fixer Drone for the insane duration and insane healing and although all uh, only tier 2 it heals 47,000 because all my modes are for skill repairs or you have something incoming repairs the maximum amount is 20% for both I was luckier to have a skill uh, repair modes that are close to 20% that's why I use those and the fixer drone can keep me up and because I want to run with all four directives including the scaven skills uh, the that's why I don't use a secondary skill and I prefer the Technician's Artificer Hive which refreshes the duration and increases the buffs the Fixer Drone it's ideal for the playstyle, you just remain hidden and you will probably never need to refresh the Fixer Drone only after you have cleared the control point, territory control then you can cancel the skill if you're not very fan of, of all directives and you don't have, you don't run the scavenge skill there are so many good alternatives the burn sticky bomb uh, that applies the burn status effect the shrapnel or shock trap, the pulse jammer, the blinder firefly, the fire cluster the Stinger Hive, the Seeker Mine Air Burst, excellent talent, excellent skills for you to use depending on your playstyle. I have to try many of those without the Scaven skills. They're excellent, but if you want all directives, the Artificer Hive will uh, help you have the Fixer Dawn up and running all the time. Uh, that's why also I use the Technician Specialization, but not only for the Artificer Hive, but for the MP Grenade, because uh, most of the times because you cannot bleed the tanks, the mechanical dogs, the MP grenade, it's excellent against them. Let's have a look at the stats, although uh, there's no point because our stats are not very nice and we don't care, we, de we do damage over time that is affected by the status effect, attributes not the critical hit chance, the critical hit damage, as you see it's very low, 10%, 45%, the range is very good, the reload speed is very impressive, we have 4 seconds reload, four seconds for the pestilence, because we have 40% reload speed bonus, as the watch is maxed out for reload speed, and for the bonus for the ongoing directive, and the survivability is not very good, we don't have so much armor, uh, it's the only build, I don't care to have armor, because we remain in cover most of the time, we just pick the enemies, apply the damage over time, keep remain hidden if our armor breaks, the fixer drone will fix it, and that's basically it. Some tips while running the build, take advantage that you do not have to be at closer range, be in as far distance as you can, in a hidden spot if possible, that you cannot get pincer attack from behind, it's the easiest way to just wipe if enemies attack you from behind sometimes, and you face enemies from the front, it will be very hard to escape, just be careful about that, apply the bleed as soon as you can, especially when you face multiple enemies. One bleed effect is more than enough to deal with normal enemies, one or two to deal with veteran enemies and two or three to deal with elite enemies. If you are facing heavy enemies that their armor will not break easily with damage over time effects, make sure to save one or at least two other enemies surrounding, preferably a normal and a veteran enemy, so you will not run out of hollow point ammo. 
And take full advantage of the Pestilence Unique debuff, keep shooting the heavy to have full stacks. After you are close to running out of ammo, kill uh, or apply a dodge to one of the other enemies, so you will take back again hollow point ammo, keep focusing on the heavy and eventually you will be able to kill it. The same tactic also applies, although easier to deal with, are the mechanical dogs and tags from the black tasks, unless you do not have the Technician Specialization, which is one EMP grenade, it's very easy to deal with them, you will disrupt them for a long period of time and also apply a debuff, while applying the second debuff from your Pestilence weapon, kill them quite fast. And finally, some ways you can gain hollow point ammo without using any skills, although it's quite hard to run out of uh, hollow point ammo, but in case you do not want to use your skills to initially get some hollow point ammo, these are a couple of ways I discovered uh, doing so. First, you can use a grenade that applies a status effect, in our case on the EMP, to any enemy that is unaware, shoot him with uh, your primary weapon, and after he's dead while having the status effect, you will gain the hollow point ammo. Second, you can visit a control point that has a special type of ammo that applies the initial status effects you will need. And finally, you can utilize the first method without going outside in the base by throwing a grenade to one of the targets, apply the status effect, gain the hollow point ammo, bleed the next target with your new hollow point ammo and refill all your weapons without going outside. After you go once and get outside, you will have all your weapons uh, full with hollow point ammo and you do not have to just do any of the other two previous methods. As a final tip of the day, in case you run ammo hoarders, try to avoid reloading at all if you can, otherwise you run the risk to run out of ammo even when you gain hollow point ammo, there is a small risk that you will run out of bullets. But in case you avoid reloading, there is zero risk because basically you will not waste even one bullet as you will be gaining the hollow point ammo every time you kill a status effect enemy. And that was it for today's video. For the end, as usual, I will leave a section without commentary with some additional gameplay for you to review. As always, feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, anything else you have to add in the section below. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos for The Division 2 and other video games. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day.
serious trauma detected. leaves the faction in disarray. I'll send teams to start securing the supplies and the equipment those bastards were hoarding. And I'll let Odessa know. The theater settlement will be able to rest a little easier now. <laughs> <laughs> 